Boy Gotham, a crazy podcast about DC, with your host E-Rock and PD. When we speak up, get your geeks up, cause you know you about to get geeked up. So sit back, relax, and get comfy. Lose your mind like Solomon Grundy, and listen to a show that won't be forgotten. Coming straight out of Gotham. And hello, everybody out in the greater DC Extended Universe. Welcome to another episode of Straight Out of Gotham, episode 51. We are a fandom pop culture podcast and a proud member of the Batman Podcast Network, hosted by Batman on Film. Make sure you check out all the other great shows. Uh, there's links on Batman on Film. Um, Bat, I believe Bat Podcast, Batman Podcast Network is no longer active. So head on over to BOF. Check out the other great shows. Uh, there's tons of them. It's a buffet. Lovely, lovely stuff. I'm your co-host on the other side of the Hudson River, senior contributor who said Batman on Film. I am Peter R. Vera. And today we are recording on September 27, 2021. And as always, we have a great show for you today. But I'd like to remind you, all the faithful listeners, listeners <laughs> if you take the time to uh, rate and review our show on uh, apple Podcasts, itunes uh and we read your uh review on air you enter our contest and uh you will get a special surprise pack uh don't forget september is still ongoing so make sure you um get to rate and review on like rotten tomatoes now let me introduce my other partner in crime the pound for pound leaf raking and bagging champion of oldfield a fellow batman on film contributor ladies and gentlemen mr eric holzman hello pete hello pete champ yeah man oh, rough day rough day the leaves are finally starting to fall and busy it, season it, so another thing, another thing you have to practice, like people think it's just raking leaves, but you have to do it with speed and precision. And it's very, Are you very a plastic rake or a metal intricate. rake guy? Nope. I'm a metal rake guy. Always Ooh. have been sometimes even wooden. If it's a wooden rake, wooden I'll rake. do that okay. too. Yeah. Right, right. yeah. Yeah. There's some made from bamboo as well. Okay. Um, but I, I usually go with the plat with the metal or the, um, the wooden if I have to choose. Okay. All right. So. You know, do you use uh, batting gloves, golf gloves, any kind of grip? Stick them? No, I'm okay. It's, you know, better with just your hands. Uh, you don't need to wear gloves to rake leaves. Uh, it can be a little messy at times, especially if they're wet or whatever. But, you know, you kind of just do it and make sure you do it, again, with speed. It's that's it's, This is all about speed and how many bags you can fill at one time in a certain time frame. And, and how many pounds like of leaves have you uh, raked for your championship here? Wow. Um, that's a good question. I always just count the number of bags. <laughs> really, I thought it was. I thought it was the amount of well, the each weight. bag holds about twenty pounds. I think okay. of leaves. Twenty pounds. I don't know. Is. I just know I do it, and then when they say the winner, I'm winning. So that's all I know. All right, he is a confident champion. <laughs> that's all, and I yes, but um, I'm trying to teach my nephews how to do it, so I could pass this on. I don't have kids of my own and teach, teach my nephews. They're leaf, they're leaf blower guys. How to do this. Well, Matt, you know, like in Jersey too, this time of year, the leaves start falling and yeah. they, 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 there's a lot of them. So yeah. on Long Island, it's the same thing. A lot of leaves start falling. I have a bunch of trees in my backyard Free so I can falling. practice there. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of a, um, it's kind of a thing every kid learns to do, right? I'm sure you learned when you were younger. Yeah. Your mom, your mom made you rake some leaves. Well, my dad loved to do it, and then my dad passed, so there we go. No, so you... thank you for bringing that up, though. That's something. That's another one of my, my feats that I don't talk much about, but I'm glad that you actually did the research. All, all in the book, the book that I'm <laughs> writing, <laughs> The Life and Times of Eric Holzman, Long Jesus. Island's True Aquaman, from first fish, fish stick to the last. <laughs> uh, it should be in sh on shelves within the next year. So, so what else has been going on, man? Uh, me, uh, you know, it's Twitter's been kind of quiet. I think, uh, yeah, you know, uh, outside of Justin just saying the craziest things. Uh, <laughs> he has his takes. <laughs> yes. he, he he's, got, his he's takes. got something. He's absolutely <laughs> insane. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I just kind of. I feel like we're in the home stretch here before the Batman and yeah. 
I'm end just, of the year too, right? Like yeah. now we're starting to the the holiday season. You know, fandom is uh, you know, yeah, fandom. A, what? Ten Three days away? away. That's the sixteenth. Something like that. Yes, yeah, so it's a couple weeks. A couple weeks away. But I'm, I'm, yeah. I mean, <sighs> I know you're pumped about the Jets. No, we're not even talking about them. We'll just skip over the Jets. We could talk about the Yankees. We could talk about the Yankees. That's fine. Uh, I'm not talking about the Jets yet. Um, so there's not really much to talk about. So what am I going to say? They, I don't know. They, they're terrible right now. Do you so miss Adam Gase? Not at all. That is one thing I can confidently say. I do not miss Adam Gase. Okay, I good. do not miss him. Okay. Uh, but no, but like the Yankees, like we were just talking before we got on air, they just swept the Red Sox. They yeah. Are what a game and a half, two games up? On um, Boston, yeah. First wild card, I, I, I right? Toronto, yeah. Yeah. So it's crazy. Um, you know, just you never know on a week to week basis what they're going to do. It's true, man. This has been a Jekyll, the Jekyll and Hyde season. You ride the highs, the highs, team. and you're just at the low of lows, and you're like, wow, this is. They won 13 in a row, then they lost what, seven in a row? And then. It's been crazy. Yeah. It's been a crazy year to be a Yankee fan. But again, at least they're giving us something to talk about, They, which they usually do. They're still in the I, thick of you, it. You know, they're in, you know, so, above 500. Yep, they're above 500. And they're in the thick of a wild card race. Yeah, so. so could be worse. Did you hear all the, the weird tiebreaker scenarios? No. Did you hear how it works? Uh, no, but I know they're insane. All right, I'll just t- I'll just speak to one of them because oh, sure. if not, we could do a whole show on this. That's how crazy they are. So if all oh, if sure. three teams t- or end up tied, so like the Yankees, the Blue Jays, and the Red Sox, say they ended up tied, what happens is the first team gets to play the second team, and um, whoever wins from that matchup gets in. But then the second team gets to play the third team again mm-hmm. to see if they get in again. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Which is crazy. Like, I don't know. Why can't they just I, like, isn't that what you want though? Like you, you essentially, you know, that's why they created this wild card scenario. And yeah. Then but then the, the first place team is going to have to play again, right? Like they play again. Well, you got to find out who right. the actual first place team is. So you play right. a first place game. So it's crazy. Now you, it, in that scenario, you get two wild card games. Possibly, well, you'll get three of them, but you you'll get two for the, for both the first yeah. and second place. Yeah. The third place seems the only one that kind of is asked out in that scenario. What are you gonna do? What are you? I know. Do? So that's why they play the game, Susan. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, good old John Sterling. Anyway, so uh, do we want to tell everyone about the news, or do you want to hold off on that till next time? You want to talk about the little bit of news that we've had since our last show? Uh, I mean, I was going to wait, but <laughs> I think you want to talk about it because you brought well, it up. <laughs> and now well, you, I like, mean, we can't you... talk about, we can't really talk about the, the promotion or anything yet. That's what well, we have to still stay on this, on the back burner. But, um, I mean, he and I were contacted yeah. by Manscaped to possibly sponsor us. So we're going to have a one month trial and, um, it'll be in October and we'll get all the details to you guys then, um, but they send us a nice package and of all their products to try them out. So we're going to do that. And then starting in October, we'll talk more about uh, everything that's going on with the promotion. But it was pretty cool for us because, I mean, we're just this little podcast that could. And then now it's it's cool that companies are noticing us, which I think is is pretty cool. Who would have known? I'm right? Yeah, it's crazy. So yeah, guys, so look, so look out for that next month. Uh, but again, we'll have more t- details when the time comes. So, all right. So of course we have our show set for you. We have a great rundown set up. Obviously we're going to go through a number of topics and we're going to start off with now. We don't really talk much about music on here, but Pete and I are both fans of this band and they recently had a, um, a milestone. So Nirvana, uh, everyone knows Nirvana was one of the, band that was instrumental in breaking the grunge scene in the early 90s and their first album or it might have been their second album but their first album that hit was Nevermind and it turned 30 and um, I can speak from personal experience about this because I remember how crazy it was yes I'm an old man I I was just start I was a freshman in high school when this album came out that's the um, perfect age man I'm so jealous of you 
Yeah, and it was it took the world by storm. It changed music so much yes, that dude. yes, that pop radio stations went to a grunge format. Like Z100 for a while here in New York, which is, which is the big pop station here, it was a grunge format for a while. Oh god. Which is crazy to think about if you know Z100 if you live in this area. I'm Z100 is pretty a lot of people know it nationally too because it's a big name. Is it um, is it that big? It is. I I know a lot of people do know of it because they do a lot of cross promotions with other radio stations in other cities. Uh, so, and now I think it's part of, is it iHeart or something? I don't know, but Probably. I think it's part of iHeart. So then you have that. So everyone can listen to iHeart now. So yeah, so that's how big that album was. And I mean, it's loaded with hits. Of course, Smells Like Teen Spirit is the big hit that everyone knows that album for. The whole uh, album's full of uh, bangers. There, yeah, it's, it's like, a really amazing. great album. Breed. Um, yep. It's sad when you think about what could have been. Uh, obviously, Kurt Cobain took his life, and that kind of ended them. But we wouldn't have the Foo Fighters without Nirvana hitting. Obviously, Dave Grohl became a huge star with mm. the Foo Fighters. So, you know, yeah. But that, that album, yeah, like I said, was very instrumental. So, Pete, you're a little younger. When did you first listen to that album? Do you remember? Uh, and- for me, like, I'm, the first time I really heard the album, I'd have to say I was probably in, like, eighth, ninth grade. So, it was, you know, obviously, like, that that age, right? Um, and I remember it was just like, I, I originally thought it was their first album at the time. I didn't know about Bleach. So like I was new and I learned about them and I, you know, and it's just, their music is just like, you, you can see why it resonates to young people, you know, whether they're trying to figure things out and everything. And, you know, some people don't have a, you'd say the privileges of others and you could see why they would relate to some of his music and how they would try to interpret it some way. So. Like you could see that, like looking back at it now, I was like a thir- mid thirties male looking back. I'm like, okay, like I, I, I get what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, like it spoke is the first. You know? It was the first movement that I remember that spoke directly to my generation, like in that time frame. I that I spoke lived. to mine. I said years later, oh. like he, he it was right. kind of transcending there, you know. Right, but and I just again, remember that's like that's two real albums, like In Utero and Nevermind. Are yep. you know, di- you know, they had a Pat Smear, but like that was still after the fact but like you know once they made the change from channing to to grohl it changed everything yep yeah so this that again turned 30 this year and there's an article on variety where they talk about they talk to a bunch of different execs and people who and their influences are there um reminiscing of what that album was and what nirvana was and it's a pretty cool article guys if you want to read it check it out the most interesting thing i took out of that article was something I just found out and it was that the band loved having food fights. Like there are several <laughs> quotes from different individuals being like, and this ended in a food fight and they loved having food. Fights. Like, it, it was brought up. I was like, well, I had no idea that the, they just had food fight. Like, randomly they would just start food fights. That's crazy. And uh, it's funny. Like, and if you just, Scroll through that article, you'll read it. It's it, it makes you laugh, you know. Even do a quick like Control F, I think, or yeah, to search. Um, it's 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 pretty funny. And I was like, food fights. That's interesting. But all right, so everyone knows like the hits from that album, or most people do. Obviously, you have smells like Team Spirit, Come as You Are, Breed, um, Lithium. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite song from that album? Uh Stay Away is really good. Stay Away is very good. Um. It's probably Breed, to be honest with you. I like Lounge Act a lot, though, to be honest. Yeah, it's funny. I might have to this, lean towards Lounge Act. It's funny. This is probably going to sound uh, crazy, but because of, um, or maybe people think I might not be telling the truth because it's it's was in the Batman trailer, but I lo- I've always loved something in the way. <laughs> Stay away, yeah. So, um, oh, something in the way, yeah. Something in the way, yeah. Endless, so, nameless. That's always been a fan favorite. Polly, like the whole album's at, like I'm. Lo- I'm looking yes. at the track listing. Like wow, like I, it smells like Teen Spirit is my favorite because it's like it's just like I, I, it's what everyone says, but it's like one through thirteen is just territorial pissings. I love territorial pissings. Well, the thing the thing about tells, smells like Teen Spirit is it was the perfect song to launch that era and this album. Like it's just such, it's a hard song from beginning to end, um, so I that's why I think that song in 
in the time capsule get so much attention. It's a great song, and it just it really launched the grunge era. On a that plane, in, um, on a plane, hmm? on a plane. That's another good song. Yeah, the whole album is just great songs. It's really that song and Alive by Pearl Jam are the two songs that I remember really kicking off the grunge era. So I don't like Pearl Jam. <laughs> Sorry, it's fine. but uh, yeah, so. Happy anniversary to this album again and to everyone who grew up on it, people my age who were in teenagers during that time and um, who related with the album. Um, you know, I hope you guys have listened to it. I'm sure you have, but I know sometimes we put things away. I don't think I don't think Nico's ever heard this album. Really? Who knows? We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to do something about that then. I what else didn't he he didn't see some movie Matrix. Or, you didn't see Matrix. Yeah, the Matrix. Oh, we gotta Someone's got to learn that kid. We got to learn that kid. So, uh, shout out to Deco, obviously. Uh, but yeah. So again, Nirvana. Um, never mind. Thirtieth anniversary. Guys, check out the article again. It's on Variety. If you want to read a little bit more, there's some really pretty cool stories in there. If you want to check those out? Go ahead. So we also got. We started to get a little bit more news. We're getting closer to fandom, so I think they're starting to tease things a little yeah, bit more baby. now, right? So. Um, Andy Muschietti tweeted out a picture that got a lot of attention or he tweeted and he put on Instagram. I think it was both places or maybe just he, I he, he's not on Twitter, just IG. Yeah. Okay. So you, you put down on Instagram. Sorry about that. And it was a picture of the bat suit <gasps> in red. Oh no. With the flash symbol. Oh no. In the middle of the, of the bat symbol. Like it was. Fanboys went crazy. Yeah. So. <laughs> So, I mean, we all know that, um, obviously, Michael Heaton's in this film, and he, Batman has a pretty big role in it from what I've been, what I've gleaned from reading things and some people in the know. So, I thought it was cool. Like, I saw that, and I thought it was a pretty cool photo uh, to get the ball rolling. And he's not an idiot. Like, he's doing it to drum up interest and to keep people on their toes. So, Pete, what did you think when you saw uh, my first thought was this reminds me of the Jared Leto Batfleck Joker that Hot Toys was selling. I was like, is this? I was waiting for like the, the announcement of like the Ezra <laughs> Miller, Michael Keaton, Flash, whatever. You know, like, I don't know. One or the other. Uh, so uh, that's the first thing that came ahead. And I just, I thought it was something cool for Batman Day. Who knows if it's in the movie? We'll see. Um, but, uh, you know, I thought it was something just uh, a little, you know, a little fun that he had and he loves showing off those logos. So yeah, fun. like it kind of, it kind of harkened back to the, uh, some of the little videos that Leto was putting out before he played the Joker in suicide squad, mm. um, dropping little hints here and there. Same thing what they did with the dark Knight campaign. I remember they would drop little hints here and there, um, to sh- for that film. So it's, a, it was a pretty cool thing to see. Of course it fires everyone up, which is exactly what they want. They want to drum up interest in the movie, so it was pretty cool. I thought it was um, harmless fun, but again, you, there's no such thing as harmless fun anymore. I don't think. No, everyone's got to be. Everyone's got to figure out what and when and why. Yep, everyone has to read into things way, way too deep. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I'm we, uh, it. Yeah. So of course, since we last recorded, Batman Day has come and gone. Um, I believe the last podcast we did was the day before Batman Day. So what did you do on Batman Day, Pete? Anything? Uh, I went and I bought uh, bought a couple comics. I bought the first appearance of Scarface in the Ventriloquist. That was cool. I uh, I bought uh, the final. It, I, there were th- Michael Uslan wrote three issues of Detective Comics. I was able to track down the missing issue. So uh, hopefully at the next oh, there convention. You go. So yeah, next convention maybe I can get Mister Yusuf to sign it. Um, uh, and I uh, I watched some sixty six and that was fun. Uh, and that's kind of really that was my Batman day. What about you? I watched eighty nine oh. and returns. Um, <sighs> back to back. How was Ozzy doing? Uh, did, you, did you tell him I said hi? Like, huh? How's Ozzy oh. <laughs> doing? Did you say, like, hey, Oz, you know, my guy, he loves you. I did, of course. He's I fantastic. He's a, he's a cute but yeah, I watched dude. both of those back to back. Um, I actually made one of the cocktails from the cocktail book I got, the How? Batman the oh, okay. cocktail, cocktail book. Which one? Um, it was the Mr. Freeze one. I forget the name. Because I had this blue liquor and 
Okay, it had that okay. In it. So I made that uh, what I ate dinner to celebrate. So that was just a little bit of stuff I did on Batman. I was busy most of the day, um, but at night when I settled in, I I did that. So yeah, I mean it's always I I it's, it's weird. I own those films and I could watch them anytime, but I usually don't. But on days like that, you know, I'll just put them in. I was deciding whether I wanted to watch the the Dark Knight trilogy or the Burton movies, and I decided to watch the Burton movies. So why didn't you watch some Joel? I don't know. Really, I could have like if I if it. If I want to stay up all night, I guess I could have watched <laughs> Batman Forever. Uh, I don't know. But I don't know. Cool. I just watched those two, and then it was late, and I went to sleep. So right. I don't know. But we got more th- stuff from the Batman on a little bit of news. They gave or, us gifts on Batman Day. Yes, they gave us gifts. And there was a tweet by Matt Reeves that he sent out where he was in uh, the editing studio. I believe editing. the kids call that the lab. Yes, the lab. And he was in the editing <laughs> studio and he was editing the Batman. And then Giacchino also tweeted out a clip of the orchestra playing uh, the theme. I think it was the theme, right? That's the yes, theme sir. you heard in. Yes, You're darn tootin' it was. Yes. <laughs> the theme, yeah. The theme from the Batman. Yeah, buddy. And that was incredible. I, I love all that. I love oh, music. Oh, it was great. First of all, I mean, Reeves doesn't tweet out a whole lot. So when he does, and it's Batman all right. there, uh, great little silhouette behind him. We get to see mm-hmm. Batman. He's grappling something. Love it. Nothing looking more Batman than Batman using his grappling gun. And then Giacono with the score, just getting chill. I can't wait to hear this on film in the theater with my sprite. Like I, I'm, dude, I'm ready. I think, it's, <laughs> I think, it's, I think it's really. I think he's the right composer for that, and I, I think he'll really nail it. And I'm just really excited. And that was like the icing, uh, you know, on the Batman day, right? It really was. I, I thought it was like it was pretty. It wasn't expected. I was. I thought they might do something. Um, but I didn't expect it. And then when I saw it, I was like, oh, that's very, very cool. So I loved seeing that. And um, well, we're getting yeah. good stuff in a few, <laughs> a few, you know, a few weeks. Yeah, so definitely, you know, so. they don't want to spoil us. Yeah, but it's just like it was another reminder that it's close. Right. That for me, at least, that's what dude, I thought. This, I'm like, dude, OK, I'm dude. I'm so pumped for the second trailer. I know you're not. I know you have your your resistance. But I am pumped for the second trailer. I'm pumped. I'm for not this. resisting. I'm. I You're resisting. You, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I want to see a new one because I've been watching the first one for so long. I need something new. I I, I agree. I think it's time to. I think you know. I told you I got to see it when I saw the Suicide Squad. I got to see it on the big screen for the I, first dude, time. I'm bummed. I, did, I didn't see that. Like I was bummed. My my screenings of Suicide Squad did not. I was so happy. I was like, "Holy crap!" It was awesome to see it on the big screen. So yes, it's like I said. I that was a little reminder. Yeah, it's coming, and now we got this little stuff on Batman Day that it's coming, and you know, the t- Bill always tweets that the Batman is coming, and now well, he it's is. Really, the Batman's coming. It's coming. It's really coming. Like it's it's real. It's like like you said before, we're in the home stretch. So that's the hashtag you should be using. Because it's actually home stretch. No, the Batman is coming because it's it's actually happening. (laughs) I know, I know. Ah, So that was awesome. That was another little Batman Day tidbit they gave us, and uh, that was cool, unexpected, really cool thing for them to do. And uh, yeah, it's just again. Now let's get to the trailer. That's the next step. Yes. Quick fandom in general. What else do you think we're gonna get? You think Mm. we're gonna? You think we get trailers? We should get trailers for everything. Correct. I'm hoping we get one for Black Adam. We have to. They've been done filming. Yep. Um, the Flash, obviously. Um, hmm. Aquaman 2 is not... No. We I might get a little something. I think that's the only thing you won't get a trailer for. Yeah. But no, I don't think that... Um, it was weird because last year this was during the pandemic. So I remember we got all the stuff about the shows. But the shows are ongoing now. Like Titans and um, Doom Patrol and... So those shows are ongoing right now. Maybe we'll get a little more something for the Green Lantern show. That'd be nice. I know right. Zednik is dying for more about that. I know so get something on more. that. Um, Batgirl. That'd be know, good. Those kinds of projects. Hopefully we get a little bit more information on those kinds of projects. Uh, I'm sure we'll get a little something more about Gotham Knights, the video game. And Suicide so, Squad, hopefully. Yeah, and the Suicide Squad. So I'm sure we'll get a little something for those two. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot more 
film and TV show based this year because we're not in a pandemic and they have stuff they're actually doing. So, um, have you been keeping up with the CW shows? I haven't. I've fallen behind on Star Girl. Again, you just like I have to watch girl. it though. I have it. Um, it's on my list. I just have to watch it. It's so um. So I apologize. Good, but I have not. I want a written apology. <laughs> But we did. I, I spoke just spoke about Aquaman. We did get more news about Aquaman, more casting news. Aquafina. Yes. So the Hollywood Reporter um, reported, haha, that they added they added three new cast members: India Moore, Johnny Zhao, and Vincent Regan, uh, to the cast. So that's pretty cool. Hmm. Moore apparently is playing a long longtime DC character, Karshan. Is that how you say it, Karshan? Karshan. I'm not entirely sure. You're not entirely sure. Um, Regan, Vincent Regan's playing um, King Atlan. So obviously we're probably going to have some some right. flashback scenes. That's cool. Yep. And then Zhao is playing a new character named Stingray, which is really a perfect name for a movie about the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. And it also confirmed that Randall Park, who played Dr. Shin in the first one, will be back in... Uh, the sequel i'm pumped for that i can't wait i really hope they lean heavily on dr shin for yeah uh all good news uh you know i'm not really familiar with these actors but you know like i'm gonna trust james wan on this right i only know regan um because he's been in he's been around for a while and he's been in other like smaller roles in films i've seen but yeah, the other two I've never heard of. Isn't this basically a recast of king atlan from what we've gotten previously haven't they used the same actor from Whatever form of Justice League and through Aquaman. Yeah, Graham McTavish played him in the first one. Okay. And they're re- obviously, but he would, didn't say anything. It was just kind of a visual. And yeah. this, he's obviously going to have a speaking role. I get, yeah, but I can't. So. I mean, uh, you know, Lost Kingdom, he might actually have a substantial role at some point. Right. Somehow. I wonder if it's a time travel type film now that maybe, I think about. Uh, it. I don't know, time travel, maybe ghosts. We'll see. I lean towards ghosts. But I do like, I mean, obviously we know all the other casts that are returning, except I think, um, God, what's her name? Nicole Kidman. I don't think she's coming back. But uh, okay. Patrick Wilson will be back. Uh, Yaya, Yaya will be back. No, Dolph Lundgren no, no, no. will be back. Dolph's amazing. Yeah. So, Star Study cast. Yeah. But again, like another bit of information about this movie. And I, I love the first one. So I'm really looking forward to this one. Yeah. You know, and, you know it, it'd be interesting to see what we do get from fandom actually because they just started filming so yeah i'm sure maybe we'll get some, something similar that we got to the black adam stuff last year with the rock and noah centineo and he was in that we'll get a nice little video message from momoa right? he won't wear a shirt and we drenched in water <laughs> no one will care what he has to say so yeah but i'm really really uh that's cool. Anytime, like we're filling out the cast and adding new people i hope these i don't know like i don't know these two actresses so but I can definitely see how Regan can play King Atlan. Like that's a very, very, mm-hmm. very, very good casting decision. So it's going to be cool. It's going to be a very cool. Uh, it's a cool time, man. We have all these films coming out, so it's a very cool time to be a DC fan. Hell yeah, buddy! Oh, I'm sure we'll get some Shazam stuff too at Fandom. I didn't even think about that, but I'm oh, sure we'll get some of that. Without a doubt, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. So we'll have that as well. All right, moving right along. Um, everyone knows, everyone loves, well, not everyone. Most people love Frank Miller. <laughs> uh, I do, especially I love Sin City and the Batman stuff he did and all the other things. And uh, there's an article in the Hollywood Reporter saying that he's launching a series of NFTs based on Sin City. And he'll be auctioning them off starting, what's today? Wednesday, actually, September 29th. So there's in the article they have a picture of Marv from Sin City, yeah, in like this crystal. It looks like a sketching in in the middle of crystal. That's pretty damn really, awesome. Yeah, it looks really cool. And that's one of the things that um, he's going to be auctioning off. So what do you think? I like NFTs. I know they're I they're all the rage now. I didn't know what an NFT was. I, I I had no idea. I was like, what is an NFT? I was waiting for them to explain it in the article, and they never do. And I was like, oh okay, it's like this kind of image etched in crystal like you said um it seems really cool uh i would i would consider getting some kind of batman nft uh if they were available uh so but yeah uh, they're they're another way of um 
how do I put that? They're kind of another way of investing now. They're they're really NFT stands for non fungible tokens. Yeah. Um, it's blockchain technology. I'm not going to get into the whole what exactly it is, but it's just another way for people to um, invest in things and for for these people who have them to make money. That's pretty much what it is. But guys, definitely check out the article. Um, you can see the picture of the, the Mickey Rourke etching. It's very, very cool. Um, there's supposed to be going to be other ones. Uh, a lot of stuff is coming on. Um, with with comic creators the article goes in to say that uh, i think pete and i talked about this that um substack subscription new as a service is enlisting top marvel and dc writers uh to do things and scott snyder inked a deal with comicology comicsology sorry um to create digital comics so that was pretty cool news that we're going to be getting st- more stuff from Scott Snyder. He has his own deal to create things. For we're reading his Nocturna stuff, and that's really good. So, so it's okay. nice to know he's been finding success outside of the DC universe. Yeah. I know, I know a lot of these guys. They they really get excited, obviously, when their creation is a big hit, and his Nocturna has been really fantastic. Him and Tony Daniel. Yeah. So it should be fun, and the article they go. Um, What's it called? They asked, they actually asked Miller about would he ever go back to do something like that or would he do digital comics? And Pete, you would, his answer was no, he prefers to do print. So I know you're someone who loves yeah, print. Yeah, me and Frank. So that's awesome. And they also asked him in the article if he would ever go back to doing something for DC. And he said, yes, he loves the characters, Marvel and DC. He said he'd, he'd be perfectly happy to I'm sure he would. To do. I'd love, would love, and we'd love to have him back. Right, so it, the article is very. Um, it talks about the NFTs, but it also talks about Miller and where he's at with this stuff. And it's a pretty cool article, guys. So again, it's on the Hollywood Reporter. Check that out, uh, and then let us know what you think when you read it. Yeah, cool buddy. Stuff. So we also got some other news that our friend Ryan Haas is probably very happy about, and of course, I'm talking about the announcement of an animated Super Mario Brothers movie. Yeah, man. Now. Uh, this came out, I want to say, middle of last, last no, at the end of last week. I think it was Friday. And it has an all-star voice, voice cast led by Chris Pratt, who's playing Mario, Anya Taylor-Joy as Princess Peach, Charlie Day as Luigi, Jack Black as Bowser, Keenan-Michael Key as Toad, and Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong. I can't wait. I can't <laughs> wait. Are you kidding me? Bring it on, man. I thought the Pratt voice casting was a little different. But I'm willing to see. I want to see how what he can do. Out. I want to see what he can do. So, but to see. Seth Rogen is Donkey Kong. Yeah, dude. And just casting Charlie Day as Luigi, I already know the kind of character oh, Luigi's so, going to be. So, <laughs> well, that's who Luigi is. Um, yes, we already know who he's going to be. So, um, I, it was good to see Jack Black's name. Yes, on the list, love Jack Black. Like that was awesome. Keegan Michael Keegan Michael Key is always awesome. Yes, whatever he does. So, and Anya Taylor Joy is like the hottest name in in actresses right now. Like she's all over the place. She's all she's on top of the Holzman scale. Yeah. So, well, not I don't know about that. I'm just saying she's her name is very popular <laughs> right now. Am I gotta turn this show into something that's not Pete. It's a family show. It, it, she's top the scale. <laughs> said, I didn't say it either. Well, well, we know we mentioned Nico before. She is at the top of Nico's scale. I can tell you that. He has a crush on Elite. Yes. He has a crush on her. And he talks about her a lot. He's but got again, a crush on that girl who plays Batgirl. He loves that girl. What's her name? Yeah. Leslie Grace. Yeah. He loves that girl. I can't blame him. She's a good looking woman. She's right. a good looking woman. So this is awesome. This news is just really awesome. Um I like how they're putting Donkey Kong in it. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, Donkey Kong's got great history with Mario, so definitely. Yeah, he does. Sense. He does. But I like how they're, it's the Super Mario Brothers movie, but Donkey Kong's in it, so it's, I'm kind of liking. When we review the movie, we'll have to have Haas on. He'll have to be on the yes. show. Yes, we have to have him on. I wonder. It'll be interesting if he does anything for it, um, since he does the SMB movie archive. Like he I'm does sure he will. Stuff. So it'll be interesting to see what he does. Um, maybe from, he'll do a satellite show. Maybe he will. Maybe he will do a satellite show for this movie. But this is this is awesome, but it came out of the blue. Like I hadn't heard anything about this project. So that's yeah, the best thing here. for me 
it just popped up and I'm like, holy crap, look at this. Yeah, I know. It wasn't even like a real article on THR either. It was just a tweet yep. and a video. And I was like, you guys didn't write an article on this? Why? <laughs> so now that we're getting us, we're Mario Brothers. Are there any other titles, Pete, that you from Nintendo that you think should get this an animated movie? Hmm. I'd like to see like a, a, a real like Donkey Kong movie. Like I love Donkey and Diddy and all those guys. Mm-hmm. So like, like I, that would be something I'd be interested in, but I, I don't know. Like what about like the legend of Zelda? That'd be cool, but that's definitely more serious. That can, you could do that as like an actual movie. Yeah, that's know? true. That would be a cool live action one. Yeah. I think you do Zelda really well done in live like action. Metroid. I'm trying to think of all those cool games. But Duck Hunt. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine making Duck Hunt a video a movie? That would have to be like one of those spoof type films. Um and it probably would do terribly. <laughs> but uh if they ever did those ones, yeah, like the ones from the original console. Mm-hmm. Like I would put up Legend of Zelda, that's one from the original console. Um uh, but yeah, man, those would be that would be hysterical. I think that would be very funny. They should do shorts. Maybe do shorts for like Duck Hunt and stuff. That'd be funny. But I'd lo- I love The Legend of Zelda as a kid, so I would love for that for them to do a Zelda movie. Yeah, it could um, be epic, like Lord of the Rings style. I think like Timothy Calumet could play, you know, Link. And I don't know. I'm just fan casting in my head now. But I want a gold Blu-ray. That would be yeah, right. That would be awesome because the game came in a go- was a gold cartridge yeah. at the time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It got stolen from me. It's a sore story. I brought it to school and someone stole it. Why did you bring it to school? I don't remember why I brought it. I probably was feeling, because I think I was one of the first kids who had it, so I was probably feeling my oath like, hey, look, I got Legend of Zelda. Like, we can't play it, but I have it. <laughs> and then someone stole it from my locker. Oh, man. How terrible is that? I was in third grade. You had a locker in third grade? Yeah, I had a locker in the back of the classroom. Like there was lockers in the classroom. That's crazy. Like, I don't know. You, I guess, and no one fessed up to it. Nope. Nope. Someone in and the, then I someone remember in the when, class stole your. Not to go down memory lane of stuff that happened when I was in grammar school, but um, oh, God. I remember in fifth grade I had nunchucks because karate was big, and I had a pair of like plastic nunchucks, and I was using them, and they got taken from me because, and they threw them out. They didn't give them back. <laughs> I went to Catholic school, man. Those nuns did not play. Those nuns did not play at That's all. That's funny. <laughs> so. Oh, God. All right. Well, speaking of nunchucks and karate and that, this is a weird transition, but I'm going to go there. Um, you already did. <laughs> Shang-Chi uh, in the box office eclipsed Black Widow as the highest grossing film during pan- a pandemic at the domestic box office. So we're talking just about the United States. Um, which is pretty cool. Uh, Pete, have you seen it yet? I have not actually, no. Okay. Uh, well, definitely go. It's definitely worth seeing in the theater. So I got it. I'm trying to make time, man. Yeah, if you get a chance, go go to see it. But Black Widow was $183.4 million, and this surpassed that. So pretty it's, I'm just happy to hear people are going out to the movies and stuff. And uh, it's, it's right. the news. I think that's the biggest takeaway, right? The, um. Because I remember I was concerned during the pandemic that this was the theaters were going to go might go away or we get less of them. And the fact that people are actually going out and going and they still feel comfortable to go to the theater. is yeah. really, really awesome. So. In other box office news, we also learned that Dune. Everyone's been w- concerned about Dune in the United States. Is it going to make enough money? Um, I know Reno's concerned. Well, I'm concerned too. I, I like what I've seen so far from the film. Um, so I'm concerned because I want it to do well because I definitely want to see a sequel. Like mm-hmm. I want to I want it to get a sequel. And this film obviously cost a ton of money to make. It's this huge event. So if it doesn't make it back or doesn't do well, there's a chance that it's not going to get a sequel. And the news coming out of Europe uh, that it's been very good. How long has um, it been out in Europe for? Uh, let's see. I think it came out the second week of September. Oh, wow. September. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's doing pretty well. Uh, That's a big head start. It was released in Russia, France, Germany, Italy, and Spain. And 
Russia in Russia it made fifteen million, France it made thirty point four, Germany ten point two, Italy five point one, and Spain four point nine. Um, it also has additional three point one from IMAX screenings. So it's been performing very well, and the hope is that once it gets here, it does the same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know I'm interested in it, Pete. It's I don't know if you. Are. I don't know it's anything very... about Dune, but like it's so like I just hear people on Twitter talk about it, and you know, and I've been interested in it because it's like, oh, what is this? I know nothing about this, and I know there's the one in the '70s. I haven't watched that one, and you know, obviously, I talked to Reno, and Reno's so excited for this. <laughs> so he's a big fan of Denis. Yeah, in the new wave. Denis, Denis, <laughs> it is me, Reno D, Denis. <laughs> Uh, so so yeah it only dropped from first week to second week it only dropped 32 percent, which is very very good okay um that's a that's a very solid uh drop off so we'll see i gotta check it out man it sounds really interesting but definitely yeah definitely go well you definitely go check out shang chi and then when dune comes out i mean i would tell you to go see it just sight unseen but if i'll let you know what i think after i see it okay so it's gonna be a very very um you should do cool like a, film. you should do one of those car reviews after the movie i usually do this is eric holes this is et eric tonight <laughs> all right so let's talk about this because we talked about it a little bit before we came on and um i'm really really excited for this movie even though it's not from what i'm hearing it's not doing well but the final trailer from halloween kills uh, came out and I thought it was great. Uh, I liked the first one, but this one was even better. There's so many more, like you see more of the characters and who, who Michael Myers is interacting with. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a little bit bloodier, even though the first one had the thing where he put the bottle through that woman's neck. Like this is even a little more bloodier <laughs> than the first one was. Uh, but it gives a little bit more detail into the story. Um, it definitely seems that he, like I know we talked about in the after the first one that he's he's stronger like he's gotten stronger with each person he's killed which I said before is like a Kruger Freddy Kruger thing but thing but yeah so what did you think Pete because again I loved it I thought it was a fantastic trailer. I thought it was intense I thought it was amazing uh, I'm really pumped for this I cannot wait to see this movie uh, I loved watching all those people die it was really just fun to watch uh, it was cool to see the plot and how he's you know how he's you know seeking out specific people killing certain people and you know it seems like we're going to have a, a showdown at the old myers residence yeah um and uh, and an unmasking yeah i don't really care kind of hint but uh it seems to follow all the i guess people call them tropes but i was like this is kind of what i want out of a halloween movie like laurie versus michael and the high wires right what else do you want it's like saying i want to watch a batman movie but i don't want it to be like Batman versus the Joker in a final fight because it's kind of like cliche. I'm like, what? <laughs> Shut up. Or, or you don't want it to be Batman versus one of his villains at the end. Yeah. Like, I'd know. rather have Batman fight this alien that he never really fights. <laughs> You're right. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's what you want from a Halloween film. You want yeah, like bring it on. The people you know. Yeah. So I'm excited. I, I you know, I, I'm with you. I hear I, that movie's not getting really reviewed well, but yeah, I was like, was the other one reviewed well? Was it just like one of those things where fans liked and critics didn't it? like? You know, kind of like BVS. Um, <laughs> That's so, true. Uh, we'll see. I don't know. I, I enjoyed the first one. I'm sure I'll enjoy this one. If I don't, I don't. But, uh, you know, we'll see. Uh, I, look, I look forward to seeing it. It's a yeah. Halloween movie in October. That sounds great to me. Yep. So definitely. I mean, guys, if you haven't seen the new trailer, it's everywhere. You can go. The only question is, what am I going to see more in the month of October? Many Saints of Newark or Halloween? <laughs> Honestly. I think you'll probably see... I don't know. Halloween is on Peacock, so you, if you don't have Peacock, then you're not going to be able to see watch it at home. Just in the yeah, theater. but if it's really good. I'll just keep buying tickets, right? Many Saints of Newark is going to be on HBO Max. That's true. So it'll be interesting. Social so, experiment. It will be there, so it'll be interesting to see how you choose to um, devour that content. I'll put it that way. All right, so there's another interesting story in The Hollywood Reporter that I actually just read today, and um, it's a, it's, I think it's being made up to be bigger than it might actually be in the end, but it's an interesting story anyway. So the estates of a couple of the um, 
the writers and creators of certain Marvel characters are actually suing Disney to um, get them back, to get the, the state wants the rights back to the characters. So Disney is going in defending, saying, well, Marvel, Marvel, it's actually Marvel's um, lawsuit. Disney, I'm saying Disney because of the parent, but it's yeah. actually Marvel's lawsuit. So Marvel is saying that, well, when these were created, these these characters were created, they had the Marvel method where basically they paid the writers and creators as freelance a wage, but once the the they gave them the characters and were under the Marvel heading, Marvel owned the rights to the characters. That's how that works. So Disney is saying that should still be the case because you know that's how the was set up back then. And that should be the case going forward. There was an attempt years ago with Spider-Man. Someone made the same attempt to try and um, do that. And it never, it actually was being discussed by the Supreme court because the case was going to go to the Supreme court. And you know, the Supreme court only takes a certain number of cases, um, but they were at Ruth Bader Ginsburg wanted to take this one. And it turned out that they wound up settling because I guess Disney didn't want to it was disney still at the time they had already bought the rights disney didn't want to go into that kind of a thing and possibly mm. lose the rights uh to spider-man um, again <laughs> again yeah so it was an interesting um interesting little development that i read in there. this article is very very interesting because it could portend for other characters down the line right like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um it said i believe hold on i believe this one specifically was for um, Iron Man, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, Ant-Man, Hawkeye, Black Widow, Falcon, and Thor. Um, so think about that. Think about the MCU if those characters... <laughs> well, that's why they're all, they're all dead now. <laughs> <laughs> but think about it if you, they don't have rights to those characters anymore. Now, yeah. obviously, I'm sure they'll come to some kind of agreement. The thing is, if the estates win then disney has to share the profits from the films with the estate and they're saying oh. well, they're not doing anything for the they're not doing anything for the for the movie so why should they get paid like you know we have the rights to these characters why should they get paid but that's what they're wanting and i understand it from the people the the families of these guys who want yeah, to kind of i get the legacy point of view like my dad created this one whatever like i feel right. like i should some kind of residual maybe the, and you know they probably should to be honest with you you know like how many years was bill finger screwed out of recognition and, You're right. and it, it, to be honest and it's maybe for some recognition is just uh the the right amount of uh ret retribute for something like this um you know I, I, I see both sides but i also feel like it it's just greed, one greedy corporation just wanting as much money as possible. It's like, don't you get, you guys print money. Come on, give me a break. You know, like, yeah, give this guy, a, 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 write this guy a check and just call it, just call it even. And that's it. Like you didn't create the character. I don't know. You know, so I don't know. I feel like I side more with the family and the legacy, but. I just, feel like in the long run, there's going to be this, some kind of settlement. I don't think this is going to affect the MCU at all, though. Like, I, just, I really right. don't. I think whatever, whatever. I think it's probably been brought to light because of the MCU, and now people exactly. people will listen to these people's claims, and uh, I think that's really what that's about. So, yeah, I I agree. Like, I think uh, so. At, at the end of the day, it's probably going to come down to some kind of settlement again, um, unless. Disney knows that they have a, a very good shot of winning, uh, then why would they settle? But if they think it's possible that it could go the other way, I think they'll probably just wind up settling this case. But it is an interesting, a little interesting little story. And it, I mean, it's obviously adjacent to comic book characters because it's a really illegal matter, but uh, it's very, very interesting. So if you guys want to read up on it, it's in The Hollywood Reporter. I've seen it in Deadline as well. You guys can read it at either of those places. Uh, but it's a very, very interesting case and just something I'll follow. I'll definitely follow and see what happens because I, I, I'm interested in this stuff. So Eric was a paralegal for a, a little bit. so he I definitely to, was. I he, was he, he likes the legalities of these things. So yeah, so I do enjoy these stories. When they come into this world, especially like a world I'm interested outside of the legal side of it, yeah. I enjoy these kinds of things. So I will definitely keep an eye on it. He interned for Johnny Cochran's nephew, Something. Billy Cochran. Oh, I wish I did. I wish I interned for so, Johnny Cochran. That's one of Eric's great educational <laughs> championships we don't discuss those enough maybe one day oh no but i wish i did man i totally wish i did that would have been an awesome so, internship 
I probably yeah. would, would have become a lawyer had I done that. Billy Cochran. That's a different story for a different time. All right. So, Pete, we are at the – we're kind of at the tail end of this season of DC's Titans. And we haven't really talked about it much. Well, so, because you hate the show. I love the show. I <laughs> review the show. What are you talking about? Come on, man. Come on, man. Anyway, uh, so what is your what has your opinion been so far of this season? I think it, I, I think it's very good. Um, it's still Star Girl, still my favorite DC show. Uh, mm-hmm. I want to see what Doom Patrol does, um, but uh, I've I've really liked what Titans does. I think Titans is at its best when it's very Batman heavy. <laughs> to be honest with you, um, the stuff with Superboy's been okay. Uh, I'm glad we finally got to see Raven. Uh, but overall, I really like yep. the season and everything. The Jason Todd stuff won me over. And the more I watched yeah, it, great. I thought that's been very good. Um, I enjoy with. I, I I wish that can I get the scarecrow in a mask? That's all I really want. I would like to see him wear a mask at some point. Um, I have a feeling we will. But I like. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the hell is going on with this version of Bruce Wayne. It's so interesting. <laughs> like it, I, I just I'm so curious to find out what's what with this guy because this is the most unique and just version of the character that i've ever seen before so yeah the last episode i think probably ruffled a lot of people the purest feathers um with the decisions that he made oh uh, you know that I, I was even shocked that they went there but uh, I've this season has been so much fun to review because it's you're right it's been very Batman heavy so it's stuff I'm very very familiar with mm-hmm. and uh, it's just been a really really good season for character development. Yeah. A lot of times in the past in the past seasons they've de- started developing characters and then just dropped them and you don't really know anymore and then you see them again and they're like fully formed or whatever. So this year it's, it's taken a long time. I've loved the inclusion of Blackfire. I think she's been an excellent she has been great yes part of the show. Uh, I love the co- growth Corey's gone through. I think she's getting um, stronger and more confident as the season as the season goes on. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, you said the Jason Todd stuff has been incredible. Um, it's weird for me. The, the part of the show that's kind of maintained and hasn't really done much for me is the Dick Grayson story. Uh, I, you know, it's it's there, but um, you know, to, for me that hasn't been a huge draw like he's kind of been who he's always been in the show which is fine uh you always need a steadying presence but i haven't really loved his stuff uh what else was i gonna say he's kind of the driving force of the show it's not really about him he just keeps it moving right uh gar i wish we'd see a little bit more with gar and superboy i think the I superboy think stuff a lot of st- stuff with superboy right the, the, the stuff with him and blackfire is great <laughs> look that relationship is pretty awesome uh but yeah, overall, the season has just been incredible. The last episode, uh, I mean, I wrote the review about it already, so I'll talk. Uh, how they bring Hank back in. Yes, that was uh, very good. Very good. It was really, really well done. And to me, the writing this season has been the best it's ever been. I don't know if it's because of the increased budget that HBO gives them. I think that's part of it, yeah. I'm sure that is. Uh, I've liked Which the, is why the I want to see what Doom Patrol can do with this. Right. But you're right about you're definitely right about this Bruce Wayne. It is a very different Bruce Wayne than he's so ever weird. seen before. And it is confusing to people. Like I was pretty fine with it up until this last episode. Sometimes like, I wow. like it, sometimes I don't, and half the time yeah. I'm confused. I'm like, what yeah. is going on here with this guy? Yeah. Like I said, the last episode, that decision I was kinda of like, wow, okay. Yeah. I was like, what? What are they doing? Uh but it ends on a good note with him, so I'm not gonna be too upset. Bringing and the resurrection of Donna, like you said, and then Rachel being back finally in the show. She in the one episode, you can see how much she's grown uh, with her powers and how she's just so much more confident using yeah. them and understands them. Yeah. So it's going to be an interesting last three episodes or four. It's thirteen episodes. This was nine, so ten, four. Um, they'll have the last four episodes end up because they do have a lot of a lot of loose ends to tie. I think. <laughs> So I'm hoping they don't rush it like they've done in the past and they actually hit each mark. Because that's the only thing for me that I'm waiting for now is the ending. A how good gonna, season finale. Yeah, how are they going to end the season? So I know you brought up Doom Patrol. I know it's released. I know it was released last Thursday. I haven't watched the first three episodes yet. I do know they're out. So guys, uh, maybe our next show will go through the first three episodes or four. If you want Eric to review Doom Patrol for BOF, 
Send him a tweet. <sighs> Just uh, let's do E H four D P B O F. That's the hashtag. I'm gonna edit this part out of the show. <laughs> so if you want Eric <laughs> to review Doom Patrol for Batman on film, E H D P B O F. That's the hashtag. Tweet him. Tag Strand at Gotham. Tag me. Tag Eric. Tag Bill Jet <laughs> Ramey. Let's get Eric reviewing Doom Patrol for Batman on film because you love his stuff. So here we go. I wish it was on a different day. That's the only thing. I wish it was. They're both on Thursday. All right. So, so now just, you know you'll do one. It's just a, do the yeah. Other. It's a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll I'll think about it. I'll think about it. I do love the show, so it's not a hard review for me. I gotta I gotta see what you think about these first three. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've read some people. Who've been kind of iffy on them. I was, I'm a little, sensing I, I was iffy. iffy on them too. I was iffy. I was iffy. All right. All right. So, so we'll I'm interested get... to hear what you have to say. All right. We'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. I'll get there. Definitely get... the next show, guys. I'll definitely, we'll definitely talk Doom Patrol on the next get show. Get it. Uh, so. All right. That's all we have for today. That's it, baby. That's it. That's it. Ryan Lauer's knocking at the door. He's trying to get in. <laughs> All right, so Pete, let them know where they can find you and all you your can stuff. follow me on social media. That's Twitter, Instagram, and Zach Snyder's favorite bureau at Pete Illustrated. You can follow this podcast, the podcast you're listening to right now, at straight underscore O underscore G, straight out of Gotham. That's us. Listen to us here. Uh, follow us there. You can follow podcast number two, the Italian Spider Man Coalition podcast. I co host with Chi Town's finest, Sausage and Meatball, Nico and Nick Caruso. Uh, that is at Italians for Spidey. Check out at Team Yellow Oval as we just can't champion the campaign of the return of Keaton and whatever that hybrid uh, bat suit that Andy Muschietti uh, showed us the other day. Check out my reviews of Detective Comics and other comic books on BatmanOnFilm.com. Check out Batman on Film YouTube for my video reviews uh, and interviews. Uh, I got toy reviews. I've got interviews with Uslin and Tara Strong and all that jazz. Uh, check out the Straight Outta Gotham Facebook page. Check out the Straight Outta Gotham group. Uh, check out Straight Outta Gotham on YouTube. Uh, check out our T Public store because there might be a shirt there still. I don't know. <laughs> They're not taken down. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens in October. We'll see how long it takes them to take them down then. Uh, check out that stuff. Uh, and that seems to be it. Take it away, uh, champion. Yes, sir. So, you guys, as you know, you can find me on Twitter at finally33. Same on Instagram as well. You can find me, as Pete said, you can find us on Facebook, uh, both in our group and the show page and all that stuff is there. As I mentioned, I reviewed LongIslandSingles.com. We're on there, too. <laughs> I review Titans for I um, for Batman on Films. I just, it was just posted up today, my, my reviews for the last two episodes. Guys, go there and check it out. If you want to talk to me, get at me, talk to me about something that you disagree with or talk to me about something you agree with or whatever. Just hit me up on Twitter and or in the, comments, in the comments section as well. I, I do check the BOF comments section if you guys leave comments there about my reviews. Definitely love talking about the show, so you can hit me there as well. I believe that's it. Get Eric to review Doom Patrol. <laughs> Robin on film. Hashtag <laughs> E-H-D-P-B-O-F. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Blah, blah. There we All go. Right. All right, so Pete's got to run, so let's just wrap this up. I'm so a, for Ryan Lauer's at the door. He's bad. Yes, he's, he's knocking at the door. So for Pete Vera, I'm Eric Holzman. You are listening to Straight Outta Gotham, and we'll see you next time. Booyah!